Hello and welcome to the Cabin Boy Nits Woolcast, coming to you deep from the Canadian forest. This is Christopher. And this is the other guy. Jamie. We're going to give you an update on the cabin, and we're also going to talk about some collaborations and a knit along. And we're going to talk about a whip and a fob and another whip and fob. And we have a special guest. We do? Yes. I'm back in the kitchen. Some say where I belong. I'm going to do something Christmassy. And we're going to announce the winner of the Name a Bear. So sit back, grab your favorite drink, and we'll tell you our story. For the new viewers, welcome to our cabin. And for those of you who have been watching us for a while, welcome back to our cabin. I think that's something we, we probably don't do often enough is to thank everyone for coming back and giving of their time again and again. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate knowing that you're there. So thank you. Thank you very much. And it is the season of giving. So thanks for giving of yourself and your time. Thank you. So what's been going on in the cabin? Or outside Nothing. of the cabin? We have a story. It's a story of the wind. Yes. So for those of you who don't know where we're located, we are in Ontario, Canada, and we live in an area on top of a hill, pretty much, and they're called drumlins. So if you were to stand up and look across the land, you would see, it basically looks like the Loch Ness Monster. It, there's a bunch of these hills, and we live on top of one of them called the Oak Hills, and it gets windy. It gets quite windy. I mean, what are we there? I should say. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I. <laughs> but when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. W. H. Mitchell. <laughs> he was a professor at, at school at, at the University of Windsor. Oh, I didn't you know that? that. Didn't know I that. Just know he's an author, Canadian. Yeah, and you're very good at reciting poetry and novels and anything literature. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, back to the forest. Wind. So back to the wind. Yes. Is there any other any other wind stories you want to share with us? <laughs> Filthy old wind poem, I know. <laughs> oh well, if, if I give you a minute, I'm sure you can think of some others. Anyway, we were locked up in the cabin all day working on stuff, and at the end of the day, we decided to go for a walk in the forest. We did not check the weather, and there was a. Are you alright? Yeah, just messes. <laughs> there was a weather. Alert. It was a yeah, wind alert. We don't watch the news. We don't 
watch much TV, so we just do our thing in here. So we had no idea. We just were going for a walk. Okay, in the woods. that's kind of true. We had a stick outside of our kitchen window. Oh, yeah, the stick. And the there is stick, a stick tells us what the weather's going to do, but it's primarily rain or, or not. So it's usually overcast. It's limp. Yeah. And when it's limp, we don't like it. Yeah. No. No one sunny, likes it limp. That's sunny for sure. and stiff. It's a good day. Yes. And this is so, most of the time, so it was overcast, but hey, overcast. But it doesn't really tell us, nice it doesn't really tell us about a wind alert. And so we went into the forest. There was a wind alert and across Ontario, I think, and yes. or Southern Ontario. And we took the dog and Jamie has this thing. He's had, whenever I take the dog for a walk in the forest, he always says, be very careful and make sure a tree doesn't fall on you, which I always think is absolutely ridiculous. Like there's no... What are the, what's the likelihood of a tree falling on us? And he's been saying that for years. And then a couple of years ago in Toronto, in a very big park, a woman was killed because a tree fell on top of her. Well, so, branches snap and trees snap. Yeah. And there's a lot of big old trees out there. Anyway, so we went for a walk and we were in the middle of the forest and we heard a huge crack noise. And, and we've been here long enough now, we know what that noise is and it's a falling tree. And so we looked at each other and then I think we got nervous at that point. Well, no, branches were snapping <laughs> well, left and right center. That's right. Like small it wasn't branches, just one like tree. snap, and there would go a branch, and then yes. all of a sudden the treetops are. I I couldn't even. I didn't believe how much they could sway. Like I mean, almost. It was like a metronome. You, it was oh going back gosh. and forth and back and, and so forth. And so you don't feel the wind down in the forest, but at the at the top of the treetops they're swaying, but. Branches are snapping and cracking and popping and falling all around us. Yeah, so we and looked then at each other. Another big snap, crack, and it's a big tree or a medium tree. Yeah, and we looked at each other and just thought, we need to get out of here. So Jamie took off, and then. Well, so I didn't take off. I said, let's go. I started. Well, you were ahead of me. Pace. And then. Because you're dawdling. I was diddle dawdling. I was fascinated with what was going on. But then, in front of you, branches were falling. Yeah, one missed me. Behind, behind you. Behind me, one missed me. You saw it. I didn't see it. It fell right behind right me. Right by your heels. Uh, a good size yeah. one. And yeah, they were, it was like, we need out of here and uh, ASAP. It felt like, for those of you old enough to remember Indiana Jones and the I Temple of Doom, you, know, you were much too young for that. Uh, but that's what it felt like when oh, he was gosh, running was through and like, everything was just collapsing around us. And so we. So we got out of the forest and we ran and sat on the front porch to watch it because we were fa we faced the forest. And so we saw all of the, it was really interesting because the wind would pick up and we knew that the wind was going to pick up because the dog was terrified. Yes. And he was sitting on my lap and every time the wind would pick up, he would shove his nose right underneath my arm and hide. Yeah. And so... Yeah. And the trees, so the trees, you know, they're, I, we're just watching the trees because from the front off the veranda, they're about, how far away is that, like 20 feet, and I'm looking at the tops, and I'm thinking, mm, the wind usually comes from the west, yes. it seems, all and the time it comes from this side, so the trees square. were all blowing this way, so yep. we're nervous about anything coming this way because the top of some of those trees could possibly hit, but anyway, we sat there and watched them, and sure enough, snap, crackle, a big tree coming down there, all we heard a couple of them going down over here, and then one came down right on our little new little inroad that we built for it we put a little trail in there to get to the new build and snap crackle pop right down across the little roadway just there yeah and by that time i think we're like well and one right at the end of our driveway onto the main road and it blocked all the traffic so yeah the that crew had to come in and and get the chainsaws out and cut that down yeah that we didn't we didn't know about till i thought um i was going to go into town for pick up some dinner or something and then I got... I, Why were you going to do that? Oh yeah, because then when we got inside I said, chances are we're probably going to be lights out because that happens every time the wind picks up, the rain, a thunderstorm, we lose power. So sure enough... Why didn't you just turn the generator on? <laughs> because we didn't... We said, we've been saying for the last couple of years, we're going to get a special socket made where you could plug in the generator and and have all the basics run off the generator and we haven't done that on the exterior so you plug the generator into one sort of socket and let's say you have the refrigerator going and some basic lights yeah. some basics but we haven't done that yeah i mean the power goes out a few times a year and we always every several, time it goes out several yeah every time it goes out we always say we're going to buy a generator but we've never no we have a generator we didn't do the socket to plug the generator into anything oh i didn't know we had a generator yeah, that's been sitting in the basement <laughs> since we've been here. I didn't think we bought one. Yet. That's from oh, your that dad. little one. No, oh, that's enough. All you need. 
I showed it to to the electrician, yes. and he said, "Yeah, it's like it's sitting right there." Yeah. So we haven't we haven't that's that's on our to do list to figure that one out. And so Good, no, we like it's like living in we we appreciate living like the real old time from the eighteen hundreds. Well, we like the Little House on the Prairie. Then we like we're that. looking for the candles, but I know where they are. So get some candles, get some flashlights. We could hang a couple of flashlights. We have like one spotlight. But yeah, the big tree, I left, I thought, well, I'll go into town to get some food. And I can see all these lights at the end of the driveway. And I'm thinking, what up over there? So here, the car tr cars are stopped in both directions. There's only a few of them, maybe four. And there's a huge tree that came down right across the roadway, right out of our driveway. So it's like, okay, I'll just reverse back down the lane. We're not going anywhere. Um, we'll just make do with what we can well, do. Well, I, I didn't even think about that when you said that, that you reversed backwards. We have a very long driveway, and it, it, it uh, has a huge slope in it. And if you go off on either side, you roll off into well, to, to Neverland. Like, like it's 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 a big drop. About Twenty it's feet. A, it's a significant drop. It's bigger than twenty feet, and you're in basically. The ravine. Uh, the ravine. <laughs> so it's, I can't believe you did that. Wow. I know, but there's no snow. I'm so there's impressed. no snow yet. Whereas you're, you're thinking because right now we got snow. And no, thinking, but even so, uh, there's no oh lights. There's no lights around other than in the vehicle. So it, that was pretty dark. Anyway, I'm glad you did that and not me because you're better at that than I am. But... So that's what's been going on in the cabin, windstorms. And yeah, the reason I have a huge smile on my face today is because we had a snowstorm yesterday. And we have tons of snow, and I love the snow. I love it. One day. One yes. day. We've got like full on winter, which is beautiful. Yeah. Um, it started early in the morning and didn't stop all yeah. day and night. And so we've got, I don't know, like, I don't know how much snow. Lots. So cheers to the snow. Well, I'm not cheering to that. <laughs> I do like the snow. I love it. I love the different seasons. I love the snow. I love the fall. So let's give the people watching, the viewers, um, some insight into what you're drinking so that they know if it's going to be a lively show or a more it's my show. usual <laughs> it's my usual this one's special because it's i love it because it's that time of the year eggnog, eggnog. and i like eggnog i've and always liked it it's funny because i think kids don't really like eggnog or do they i don't know people think because you think Ew, well, egg, <laughs> eggnog. you're I'm more, you're more of a child than i am so ask yourself that question <laughs> I used to think, ew, egg, nog. What? Yeah, it's, it doesn't have the best. I'm not in the drinking world. no egg, and it doesn't have. It's not egg. It's just like a. It's like this Christmassy milkshake, really. It's the marketing, sweet. yeah, the marketing department was asleep when they were naming. Yeah. It, but. Oh, well, it's worse in French because it's, <laughs> it's chicken milk. <laughs> <for an entry. laughs> it's le de poule, which is milk of the chicken. So it's not even egg. It's like how are French children, you know? Hey, do you, oh, let me just fix you a little bit of chicken, chicken milk. <laughs> what? No. Um, so eggnog, I like it. It's good. I put it in my latte, and it's sweet, and it's coffee, and it's yummy. Oh, excellent. So eggnog latte. I actually have some eggnog. The first time this year. I have it in. Do you have it in there? I have it in here with some Canadian whiskey and, you do. and a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. You didn't tell me <laughs> Cause that. Because it's not, it's not as sweet enough. So I had to add some chocolate to it. Well, we'll see how this goes with a little whiskey in it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I, I think my, my grandmother, when she drank um, wine, and she rarely drank wine, Mm -hmm. um, she would always get, we could always tell, she would always get red right here, and I do the same thing. But you do I get red. red. I know, that's that's why I'm telling you the story. It's red, Jerry. Anyway, okay, so it was enough of that? Sure. What else is going on around the cabin? Well, around the wind. Um, what, what are you wearing? What am I wearing? Yeah. Who are you wearing? Oh, it's, I'll, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that a little later. It's very special. People okay. may know or not know, but... It's very, very exclusive from the house of Jem. So the house of Jem. Okay, so speaking of that, so I guess we're talking about fobs. So fobs. Fobs. Uh, finished objects. Oh, don't we yeah. start with like works and project, make our way up to finished objects? <laughs> we can do right to the finished objects. Well, we can okay, do Let's, let's go to the start. finished objects first and then we can sure. go back to what? the works of progress. Okay, so, what you got? So this is the Altair. What's an Altair? By Danielle Camo, and it is fantastic. She is a, an amazing designer, amazing Canadian designer. I would imagine amazing French-Canadian designer, Danielle, Danielle Camo. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. And she is, she owns, not only is she a designer, she does a, a million other things, but she also owns a yarn shop as well. So Spin Fiber Arts Yarn Store. And Twist Festival mm-hmm. reached out and they basically said, um, asked some designers and some yarn dyers if they wanted to collaborate. And so we said, absolutely we do. And so they brought us together and it was really nice. So Danielle said she was making a hooded cowl and the color that she wanted was to be moody. Moody. Yes. So you came up with? I came up with uh, indigo and, and yellow. So the yellow was sourced from goldenrod and marigold. You're right. Yeah. And so this it's is the color. to this beautiful teal color. It's a beautiful teal color. Oh my color. God, it's so moody. So does that mean like when you put it on you get moody or it takes away, it, it puts you in a very special mood? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's called the Altair. Uh-huh. And the, Why? do you know what that means? I have no idea. I think it stands for amazing little thing uh, at interesting regalia. Okay, well, uh, I'll tell you that that's probably not right because it's not little. There's four skeins of yarn in this. Oh my goodness. And it's bulky and it is so... Cushy is cushy right word. It's really cushy and cozy. Cushy, I cushy would and think. cozy. It is really nice, and so the Altair is the twelfth brightest star in our solar system. Oh, and so how do you know these things? I just know these things. See, when you're when you're off studying history, He's off in la I'm, la I'm land. off. I'm off in la. the stars. <laughs> so there's various ways you, you can. Are, do you want to put this on or do you want me to put it on? You go. On. I'm not messing this. You know, <laughs> like it took me to. I know, but it will make your eyes set. Pop. This hair. Okay. <laughs> And not only did it take a while to set the hair, but our makeup and hair crew are gone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and lighting crew. <laughs> we never had any. <laughs> okay. I love it. Okay. And there's several ways to wear it. Oh, there is. Like, so how is it? It's I folded. Love it. It's folded, folded inward. Inward. Yeah. And then you have the hoodie part. Yeah. And what else? How else can you do this? So you could wear it just with like the hood that. off. Or you can wear it like this. And what it, but there are several, are there like about four ways you could wear it? Yes. So you could wear it like that. Yep. And then pull the collar up. Pull the collar up. Well, you could probably leave it bunched up. Yep. Oh, and you could probably... So it's nice and warm. And you can cover like your nose probably. You know when, yep. like those balaclavas, when you used to like on a really stormy day, you could pull it right up. Yep, like that. Or, if you're not into the hood, or you don't need the hood, you can just flip the hood back. And it's just like a big cowl, and, yeah. he, and it keeps the back of your neck warm, though. That's, it it's does. Like a little hoodie. And it is so nice and soft. I it's, love it. It's like a modern day, like, what did you call those things that just you used to wear under here, like a little turtleneck thing? It's called and they're a so tacky. dicky, and they're not tacky. I used to wear one to school. Well, I did My too, mother put one weird. on me every day when I was up. Okay. <laughs> it's like a, it was like a little Here's it's full like a disclosure. Bib, bib with a collar. Here's full disclosure. So when I was going to school in the <laughs> primary grades, so grade one to grade six, it, it gets cold in, winter, in the winter oh time gosh, in Canada. That's an my mother would put, I think most kids wore long johns. My mom put leotards on me. <laughs> leotards, she did? Leotards. Oh, that's where it all started. <laughs> leotards and a dicky. So I'd go out to school in my dicky and my oh leotards. My leotards and a dicky. <laughs> what you wearing? I just my dicky and my leotards. Hey. <laughs> and then he played hockey. What is why? You... I didn't. Well, I oh didn't. God. Actually, I didn't wear them. No wonder you had to be a tough kid. Yeah, there's no way my dad let me wear those to the to the, ah. to the hockey games. Oh, so. my son's just getting changed into his jock and his and his what do you whatever you garters wear. Garters to hold up your socks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, the uh, leotards wouldn't work. And then you took off your garters for. Your I probably socks. only wore those to grade three. So I you know. took off the leotard garter and put on the <laughs> hockey garter. Leotards don't have garters. Well, you know, stop. Oh things. my god. <laughs> anyway, my face must be really red right now. Oh my god! So, so that's yeah. it. So it's really nice, but the the yarn that we used is uh, it's a bulky or chunky bulky weight, and it's merino. And I called it. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say the name correctly. So I'm looking for my French. Um, what did you call it? My help. My French helpline to pronounce this. Uh, La mouche fantastique. Well, that's what it is. And what does that mean in English? The fantastic fly. Yes. 
And why is that? Why would I call it that? I don't know. Why did you call it that? Because there was a magazine that was published in 1918 to 1920. And it was an underground magazine out of Montreal. And it was the first LGBTQ magazine in oh, North America. I didn't know that. And now you know that. Oh my gosh, look at all the stuff you're learning today. Jeez. I thought I was the one to tell stuff <laughs> to learn. How's my hair? It's good. Okay. Um, I, You know what I think too though, with this color, because there's so many variations in the shades and because it's got this teal, this blue, greeny, and then you can see the hints of yellow. You know, when you do look at, because it's called la mouche, like a fly. When, you know when you look at a fly and, a, and then that's Oh, like you're right. Bluey, I didn't even think about all that. bluey, greeny. Yes. Green, yeah. bluey. That's what it reminds me of. That's what I thought it was. Oh, about. that's really interesting. Yeah. So that's it. So I will put a link so you can check out Danielle. So you have them on the web? We're selling them on We the have them store. on the website, yes. Yep. And we will have even more kits available in the next couple of weeks because we've got another shipment of, of yarn yes. coming in and so we'll be dying like crazy to just get so you, the kits yeah. up. Just so you know, because yeah. there's a limited there is a limited numbers at the moment because the bulky was hard to come by. And and you also hope to maybe do maybe do another color. Yes. Once, yeah, we've had some the new, the new um, requests in. to come in for other colors and so we'll We'll look at that as well, but yeah. uh, it's it's oh I sh I'll be wearing this a lot in the winter time. Oh, that's yeah. It's, it's really warm, cozy, it's really nice. warm, and it's versatile. Very very versatile. Yep. So again, I will put the link on. I'll put it on to uh, Danielle's uh, Ravelry page and also um, where you can pick up the pattern. And if you want to pick up the kit, just come to our shop. Okay, it's over to you, buddy. My finished object. Your fall. Okay. I have, I made myself a little pillbox hat. <laughs> Do you know what it reminds me of? There's a reboot, or the, I guess there's a, the new Sex in the City. And <laughs> Oh no. Does she have a hat like this? <laughs> and yes, she has a hat like that. Do you, could you tell what it is? Something sim. you probably have one, but this is just a smaller version of it. It's a very little cowl and I made it with this amazing yarn now it's not one of ours but I loved it because of the color and it turned out knitted up it almost looks like camo so it's for my little niece's nephew child it's my great great niece or grand niece grand niece grand nephew great nephew it would probably be your grand nephew grand or and great niece. I don't know what you call them my niece's children. So this is for Griffin. Although the last time I gave them, there's Griffin and Phoenix. They're like two and three years old. So, you know, it's funny because you think of a color that you might think boy, girl, whatever. I had given the last gift I gave them to, they just chose which one. And it's funny because the one I thought would go to one, actually the other one preferred and I say nothing. They just, yeah. so that's, I think what's going to happen with this. So there's this one and then I have another one on the go. So yeah. That's one finished object. Are you going to um, show your whip now? Um, my whip. Well, okay, because it goes with this one. Yeah, so it's the same. this is the other one. Yeah. Now this one, I, I don't know why I'm having trouble. I keep putting it down and then I lose my mark. And then I, I've, I've made a lot of errors in this one. But it's come along nicely. I'm halfway there, just about. There's, yeah, I made a mistake there, which bothers me. Um, yeah, this is BFL. It's super soft and I love the colors. So this, yeah. So whichever one, one will be for Phoenix and one will be for Griffin. Griffin. Oh, I thought you bought this at a really expensive store. This is the project. This is from, I, I mentioned this from um, the house of Jem, which is Jem was my, you know, my nickname and from one friend in high school we talked about before because Jamie, if you put an apostrophe and spelt it, you know, female way is actually love. And so Jem, Jamie, that's from the house of Jem. Okay, be honest. So, like, you like people calling you Jem. Jem. Yes, this friend, I mentioned her before. <laughs> she'd see me in the hallway and she'd go, she'd have her books and she'd, we'd pass each other in the stairs and she'd go, bonjour Jem, <laughs> which would be like, Hi, love. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, Rachel. Is that what you did when she said that to you? No, I just said hi and I probably oh, blushed. You didn't go like this. I was oh very shy. Oh. 
No, because I was holding my books like this too. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was very masculine back then. So anyway, I, I, this is my uh, finished object. I knitted this sweater. Some of you may know because I, you know, I had a bit of a knit along. Yes. And the finished project took forever, so the yeah. knit along just kind of petered out. You did an amazing job. So my very first sweater, um, I followed along with Christopher, and it's the um, flax sweater because we put it out there to see what would be, you know, an easy sweater to do for a first yes. sweater. Yeah. So this was my first attempt at a sweater. What I and I used Gotland, which I love. It's super soft, and you can see the bit of the halo in the gray. This is dyed by Cabin Boy Knits, the blue, and I have it here on the bottom as well. There, the blue and the cream, and then. And what about the pink? And the, I'm not there yet. Jesus, can I describe it myself? Do you want to tell? What you tell me about? <laughs> tell me about the pink. Pa I am not blessed with patience, so I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll, hand, I'll hand the mic over back over I'm very you. excited because I cannot believe, and I've said this to everybody, it's like, people, okay, remember the first time you knitted a full garment, like a sweater, as opposed to, you know, mitts, hat, scarf, cowl, and it's a sweater, it's like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, I go pick something up at Value Village, and there it is, off the rack, <laughs> and so, to make this sweater that I love, and I think, oh my gosh, I made that myself. It doesn't even make sense, really. So I'm very happy with it. Um, I made a little change, a few little changes to the pattern. Mm -hmm. um, here, you probably you can't see this close up, but this is where I got the idea for that. I was saying with sure. the, the knit and the pearl row. Yeah. And then you get that sort of yeah. ribbed. It's not quite yeah. ribbed, but it's that pattern. And that and the flax sweater is supposed to go down all the, the way down. arm to here. Yeah. But I didn't like that idea. I like the idea of having it here, like that style with these sort of Because that like kind shoulder of gives pad. you like a Joan Collins shoulder. Exactly. I wanted bigger shoulders, but it, it emphasizes it's like those patches you see on like, sort of like, um, you see it on like army clothing or that sort of style of sweater. Yeah. So I wanted that. And then what I did is instead of bringing it down, I still brought my counter down and then I flicked it to the back edge of that 15 stitch count and moved it another 15 this way. So I ended up with these elbow patches right here. And I just gauged it so that they would fall where my elbows are. So the same technique I used here, and I have these little awesome. elbow patches. It looks great. It looks fantastic. And with the pink stripe is because I wanted to add a little something something. And this pink to me is very special because you know how we, pink is a symbol that's used in, you know, day of... Anti-bullying? Anti-bullying campaigns. Yeah. And, you know, it that means uh, a lot to a lot of people, and it means a lot, especially to myself, um, coming from where I came from, my hometown. And so, two things. The anti-bullying campaign with pink, and I have it here close to my heart, across my heart, a touch of pink. And also the way they use the pink triangle during World War II, and those sh yeah. who should be of in the now in the know, but they might not be. But they use the pink triangle to separate the gay from others, and they had their own pink triangle. So this is about taking back the pink and just claiming, reclaiming yep. the pink. To make something beautiful, and I just thought it. it was randomly selected. So that's There's I've maybe. learned something today. So as well. I, I mentioned this before. So f f I think going forward, when I knit something for myself, I'm always going to have something, a spot or a splash of pink in it. Oh, this great! Moving forward, excellent. And that's my finished object. Well, well done. Thank you. Okay, do you want to see my whip? Yes. What have you been working on? I have been working on, I, I picked up a magazine and there was a fantastic, there was, it was bugs related and nature related and so there were all kinds of great patterns in it. And so this one is by Anne Faith and it is called Eleven Hercules. Eleven Hercules? Yeah. What Do you have any, that? Well, it's, mean? there's not an explanation. I didn't see an explanation oh in gosh, it. Oh my gosh. However, Hercules, his 11th task was to steal the golden apple from Zeus. So that How could be that? it. Please, and so that's so that was. <laughs> Did you talk to Anne? <laughs> yeah, I dialed. I I, I conferenced Anne in 
earlier this morning and asked her, no. Well, I can recall her say, what's that all about? Explain so it could be from that, but it's, there's also bugs all over it. And, um... Bugs. And so there's the Hercules bug, right? So... Oh, well, then that's got to be... And so it. that could be... However, the Hercules bug has that big... You know, that big thing coming out of the head, like the big claw. Well, there's got claws. I can see them. No, they, but they're not the same shape as a Hercules well. claw. They're very similar. So it's probably the Hercules bug. But what, so why? So now you're saying but that then, Anne didn't get quite okay. Get but the here's what I did. Right then, no, I did not say that. Anne, I did not say bug. that. Right. Don't Anne, don't listen <laughs> to him. I. So this is what I did. I thought, okay, well maybe it's eleven bugs on the hat, but there's Are more. There eleven? No, there's more than eleven. Oh my goodness. So it has to go back to Zeus. Anne. So I, I and I'm sending you a note and asking you, <laughs> is it the golden apple? Is that part of it? There's no apple there. No, but if, why do you call it eleven? Well, she knows, but well, we don't. Well, I'm but telling you're you making that it up. I'm not making it up at all. And so I think that it's a play on words. And she took the Hercules bug, and rather than just well, calling it Hercules, know. it's eleven. And it, so, and Faith, I will be reaching out and asking this question so you can settle it. So anyway, I want to talk about this because I'm having a lot of fun knitting it. So much fun that I decided to veer off the pattern. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And I'm thinking every, anytime that we do a pattern, I'm just going to, I think we'll have an episode on, we'll just make up what we think they called it that and why. It's going to be more fun. Okay. So I have to look at my notes here because uh -huh. there is a new knitting technique that I wasn't, that I haven't done before. Did you just um, learn this? Roistood. That's what? why I wanted to do it. Roistood. Oh my goodness. So the pronunciation is Roistood, but it's not spelled that way. It's spelled R-O-O-S-I-T-U-D, but it's an Estonian Ru Est Estonian um, inlay. So what you're doing oh. is the bugs are the the inlay in the hat. And so oh. it's it's great. It's it's so it's a and it's very simple. It looks so complicated. It's not. And, and it's, then where do you how do how do you do all those claw things like antenna and claw and okay. leg things? Well before we get there, I'll just talk a little bit about the the roosted. <laughs> the roosted. So when you get to the part where you want to add color, uh huh. So you're knitting this we'll call this the main color. So this is the main color. Well, this it is, is the main cormo, color. Cormo yeah, cormo. I didn't know if you knew what that was. So, the, so this is Cormo oh, yarn, and it's the main color. The most so I'm knitting color. it until I get to the color, and then when I take get to the color, I take my color and I bring it forward. I bring the yarn forward, okay. oh. and I just let it hang there, and it just sits there while I knit five stitches or three stitches, however long the color is, and then I bring the color back, and then I knit along. So the, I'm I'm and binding you, that the color behind it, and you all, all you're seeing is a strip. Yeah, also all you're seeing is a, a like, so again, what I'm doing is when I get to the color part, I'm bringing the color, the blue, forward, and I'm just leaving it there, and then I knit my five stitches, and then I bring the color back in from behind, and then keep it tucked in behind and, and knit along. And so it's just like strands that... Yeah, it's strands going, for, yeah, strands going from oh. one to the other. And the other thing that I've been doing, which is a little bit different, is I have been carrying my floats all the way around. So I'm carrying... Uh, the blue and the um, this Green, color, greeny, bluey, yeah. greeny, teal, aquamarine kind of color. All these variations. Of yeah, green, and I'm bringing teal. those. I'm tucking those floats all the way around, every two to three stitches. And so when you look at well, that's why in the inside it looks so complicated. Yeah, it's not though. But what it does is adds extra warmth to the hat as well. Oh, like what do you call that when you do those mittens with the fuzzy on the inside? The th the thrum mittens. Is that what you're talking about? I, exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah, so it's... And, and this is for my daughter because my daughter loves bugs. She loves everything outside. And she always has. And yeah. so this hat is for her. I've got a couple of days left to finish it. Which I'm sure I will. I made a lot of pro progress last night. So I'm sure that I'm going to finish it. I will show you the end product once it's done. Okay. But I'm really happy with this pattern. And, and again, it's and Faith. And it's Hercules, and it's found. I love the way it looks. It's so unusual. It's gorgeous. It's found in the Vogue um, magazine, the one with Michelle Obama on the cover of it. So, and and that's that's, that's the most recent. Yeah, that's and that's the only place you can find it. I went on oh, to really to Anne's Ravelry page, and it, you, the, it, where it's available is only in Vogue. So, um, wow. anyway, I'll put a link to that as well. It's like almost very exclusive. So, Anne, we have a chat coming up. 
I have to find out the, the, the meaning behind the name. And I'm really excited about finishing this It's probably this the bugs. Probably. I'm going to think it's the bugs. Okay, so, Bob's. No, we did Bob's. That's yes. the whip. I still, I'm still working with those words. The whip is the work in progress. It, and you learned, um, you also learned roistood today as oh well. Oh my gosh. Which is another knitting technique. I'm that, just going to say roosted. Which you could basically master. And it's, an oh, Est again, Estonian. Inline. Master. I can't even, like, any other kind of knitting other than just knit and pearl, I'm not, I haven't done. Okay, we're on to something else. Do you want to go to the next going topic? To something something we really, to? really exciting. What is that? It is a charity knit. And I'm, not, I'm sure a number of viewers out there participate in charity knits. This is going to be a really good one. And I'll tell you how it all started. Am I going to cry? <laughs> well, you might. I, 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 it depends on how we take the story. But Gary Boston okay. reached out to the Insta Boston. World. Gary Boston reached out to the Insta World. Gary Boston on Instagram. He, reached out, he was reaching out to the Insta World people on Instagram and said that he does a ride and it's the life cycle ride. So light, um, and the money proceeds of this life cycle ride are, it's basically for HIV AIDS and it goes to San, the San Francisco AIDS Foundation and Los Angeles um, AIDS Foundation. And it's a bicycle ride from San Francisco all the way to Los Angeles. Wow, and is that, that all along that all along that coast you always talk about? Yes, and it's supposed to be one of the most beautiful yes. drives or scenic routes. Yeah, and it is 585ish, 545 miles. Did you talk about maybe doing this at one time? I did. Yes, I've, I've talked about it a lot. Younger and more fit. Yes, yes. <laughs> But it's, it doesn't mean, well, at least I can address half of that equation. I can get back into that shape. I can't yeah. do much about the age, but yes. I can get back into that. Oh, absolutely. To, but anyway, so back because to this. Because you did the bike ride Toronto to Montreal, which is 600 kilometers? 600 kilometers, yes. 100 kilometers a day over a six-day period. So, so this one's 877 this... kilometers. So that would be miles? Oh, no, how much? Kilometers. 80, 877 oh, kilometers. Longer. Um, we did 600 kilometers. So we did... so. Stepping back a second. So the reason that this really piqued my interest was because we have participated in the bike ride from the Canadian version of it from Toronto to Montreal, 600 kilometers. Yes. And it's like a traveling village of cyclists and we raise money for people living with HIV AIDS. And so it's, uh, we've done, I think I've done it six You've done times. It several times. Six I did it times. once. Yeah. And then, then the, that's just before we came to this area. And then we didn't take it up the following year for reasons I don't even remember. And now we got busy. Yeah. We got busy doing different things. And time, yeah. time's just gone by. And I yeah. absolutely wanted to do it two years ago. And then it was COVID. And yes. then last year, they did have a, a, a sort of a yes. variation of it. But they had it, didn't they? Yeah. Because friends of ours did the ride. Yes. And so then I didn't. And I could have done a shortened version of it. And then now I've been talking about doing it next year. The full thing, again, but we'll see. Right. So um, this, well, well, yes, we'll see. We'll see how that goes um, and how how everything plays out. But yeah, this has always been on my bucket list. So I was definitely yeah, attracted the, that, to the notice. That one. The one in the life cycle in San Francisco, San Francisco to Los Angeles. That's to me. That's the big brother. So Canada, ours is six hundred kilometers, and there's a different type of discipline around it. Um, which is less, and so it's so we're the we're the rambunctious younger brother, and this is the big brother. <laughs> this is the in, in the life cycle, and um, and and the course is also much tougher. I think it's I wrote down in my notes uh, the amount of incline that you do on this ride is higher than climbing Kilimanjaro. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, you mentioned that it's a lot more arduous because, is that the right word? Um, I'm thinking because it's the, the coast. It's the coastline. Right. So it's got to be hilly. Yeah. It's got to be, you know, up, down, and along that. Yes. The ocean. So back to, to Gary. So I said, absolutely, I want to participate in this in any capacity other than cycling this year. And so, and he was looking for designers and yarn dyers. And so we put our hands up and said, yes, I'm using the royal we, by the way. 
so Calvin Boynitz put his hand up and said, yes, we'd love to participate in this. And that was the last. No, was the <laughs> and then I told you about it. Um, yeah, afterwards. And it's amazing. So, yeah, but the, the great, there's so many great things about this. Firstly, um, it's a way to raise money for this fantastic charity. And I just want to say a little bit about the charities that are involved. So San Francisco and Los Angeles, HIV AIDS um, Foundation, they do fantastic work locally for San Francisco and Los Angeles, but they also do work globally as well because they've built a model to help uh, people living with HIV AIDS and they work with other countries who are suffering even in, to a greater extent. And so you're giving both locally and globally and that's that's why it's fantastic. And One there's of the different why, branches of this there is as well. Yeah. Like and what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, we'll even do campaign thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll get yeah, so over to the knitting piece of it. Um, so Gary paired us with um, two fantastic designers. The first design is called the trifecta. Trifecta, and, why, yes. why? Why? So how many, okay, before I get into the why piece of it, how many skeins of yarn do you think it takes? Three. Okay, right. Try. And, it, and it's DK weight. And so we have been partnered with Evan B and out of Ireland. Oh, Ireland? Yes. How did and, that come about? Well, it's all through the magic of Gary Boston. Because this is a project. Sort this of... is a global project. And so wow. the, the trifecta okay. is um, basically there's going to be, there's another reason why it's trifecta as well. The, the so fact There's Europe. So the, there's a yarn dyer providing yarn in Europe. Europe. There's one in the United States and there's one in Canada. Who's in Canada? Cabin Boy Knits. Oh That's how we goodness. got pulled into it. Yes. And so we've selected three colors. No, that's colors. very cool. When, especially when you think we're linking, linking these, these people from halfway around the world, across the world, across the pond, yeah. and, and to here, to there, which is way on the other side of the U.S. Um, that's great. Yeah. And bringing all these sort of designer, knitters, people, dyers together for a cause and a good one. Yeah. And then the next one is called Alicia. Alicia. And, and it's a shawl, and it is the bearded yarn. Dude. So that one's not a mystery. We know it's a shawl. Well, the other one's a shawl too, but you just don't know what it looks like. Oh, so they're gonna so two different designs. So we, yes. it's gonna be a mystery design. You're gonna just see it when it's when it's a fob. That's right. Oh, oh you had to think about it. <laughs> what the fob? That's me. Fob. What? Oh my god. Uh, I will tell you. Okay, I was. It was oh, partly. What? I was. My body was reacting to the shock that you. Did. <laughs> that you're able to string that together the lingo. in one sentence. Because I, I don't usually use the lingo because I don't know it. I'm catching on. I got all discombobulated. Uh, yeah. And so, okay, word. so we've been paired with two designers, Bearded Yarn Dudes. And, I'm going to meet the Bearded And I also yarn wanted to dudes. mention um, Freckled Past. So if you go on Instagram, Freckled Past. What's Freckled Past? That now? is the designer for Trifecta. That's the Instagram handle. Oh for... my gosh, I'm so confused. <laughs> now I'm very you confused. You won't be because it's going to be all explained in the show notes. And I will make sure that I put um, links to, to everything. And I'm not putting pictures of these things up. Do you know why? No, why? Because it's a mystery and it hasn't been made yet. <laughs> so, we don't have any, so we don't have any photos of it. Um, oh, however, we goodness. have photos of the yarn that you can use. And more importantly, $10 from every skein of yarn is going to be donated to the AIDS life cycle. So very good. Yes. So that's great. great. So we hope to sell a lot of the yarn. And then the bearded guys, like the bearded yarn guys. Do we not we, to be included with the bearded them? guys? Do, have I seen photos of them before? Do we know them? We've seen photos. We have not formally been okay. introduced. Now. But we will be because I have a feeling there's an like, interview. What if the, I mean but you, you don't that have a beard. If they're the, <laughs> the bearded yarn guys, they're like they can never shave their beards or then not be the bearded yarn guys anymore. That's putting them. It depends. In well, a, it depends on how quickly the beard grows back. That's but. putting themselves in this <laughs> bearded yarn guys. I'd be like, you're the bearded guy, and I'm the non-bearded. I could never grow a beard if we were called the bearded and non-bearded yarn guys. Sure. We'll no, we could switch it. No, we'd be able to switch it up. Yes. Because yeah. I could grow a beard, and you could shave, and yeah. we'd still be the the bearded and the shaven. There's also wigs. Okay, I'm just babbling now. Beard wigs. So, oh Merkins. <laughs> Why did you take me there? <laughs> Mentally. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> oh 
What were we talking about? <laughs> we were on a serious topic. We were talking about beer. <laughs> the bearded guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, we were talking about okay design. So anyway, cause a yes. cycle across the, yeah across the east. I mean the west coast. Yeah. So I just one more thing on the on the charity. Um, so he's doing the ride, and we're yes. providing we're providing this these um, products, these garments. We're all taking part in the fundraising aspect of it. Yeah. So let's just go through the process. So first thing you do is purchase uh, the pattern. And you can purchase the yarn. And once you do that, you've got the pattern, you've got the yarn, and then the knit along happens in January. Oh, there's the and knit along aspect. Yes, to it. and so Gary has all the details of the knit along. I will also put it on our show notes as well. Okay. He's giving a lot of time, a lot of leeway, so that um, you want to make sure that you get the yarn beforehand, uh, but you don't have to panic. And, and it's a very relaxed knit along. Is it another another country? Another country that. Is part of it? There's Canada, U.S., and Ireland. Is there in the U.K. Another... It, uh, I, I, Europe. I'm, I'm just gonna say Europe because I'm not sure if it's all of Europe or or, or the U.K. or okay. But this one, he's the the one is out of Ireland. So yes, so, yes. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so, and then we've also got the other one, the um, bearded yarn dudes as well. Right. And with they're out show, of... the United States. Right. So yep. that's connecting all of these. So this knit along is gonna be like almost like a like. Just all parts of the globe. Yeah, and I, the other thing is, when we did the the um, ride from Toronto to Montreal, the mm -hmm. the um, for people living with AIDS, uh, it was really hard to raise funds. Like it was really hard to raise funds because we had to raise a minimum of three thousand dollars, and that was a lot of money. Yes, yeah, um, so we had to go to great lengths. Yeah, we put on a production, we put on a show, we we did all kinds of stuff to try to raise money for it. I so, remember wearing just a jock. I knitted jock. I remember that. It got auctioned off at the end of the oh, yeah, I forgot my about ride. That. Someone wanted it. I remember that. Yes. They paid. A, they paid a pretty penny for that thing. <laughs> I'm sure. They did. I had the highest. Bid. Okay. Well, there's another. There's a. You did have the highest bid. I remember that. Well, not me personally. My my garment yes. garnered. The, yes. One yes. of the highest bids. We'll in have the to. Night. We'll have to mention that to Gary. And see if he's tried that yet or not. But and I remember on the on the oh street, my we're on the street doing yeah, we were yeah, we're cycling we were on the street to raise funds. Was, on a stationary all, bike, trying to raise money. It was all hustling in good, on the street. Good fun on the bike. Yeah, we all kinds of stuff. And the bike ride, you know, I, I imagine I can't imagine how this would be uh, so great. It'd be so similar because you know the camaraderie and you're in the great outdoors. Yes, and it's going to be a tough ride for some. For others who've probably done it many times, it'd be like a breeze. Um, but it'll be beautiful. It'll be companion meeting people. Yeah, it's an amazing amazing thing And there is a history. I will tell you right now. There's a history of knitters supporting cyclists Oh, because, that's right. Because in the Toronto Ride to Montreal the top fundraiser is a knitter and yeah. it's Stephanie that's Pro McPhee. Right. Yeah, the yes And was she again the yarn? Harlot, harlot, the yarn harlot, and she has raised. Oh my gosh, we, 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 hundreds of thousands of oh dollars. Oh my gosh, she's she? raised so much money, and it's through knitters like you who have who have helped. That's right. That. She's she's done an incredible amount of work um, for that charity. And Gary, the the uh, possibilities are endless here. I'm sure this we can, could be. Yeah, that would be great because if it's anything next to what she does with and fibrous get together, and this already yeah. being like U.S., Canada, U.K. Like if this global, hopefully it could generate a lot of funds for this. Absolutely, and really I know good cause. Yeah, I know Brooklyn Boy Knits has already participated in it, oh, so we're right? in the winter. We're in the winter phase of it, oh, which is great. So I'm really okay. excited about that. And Gary is trying to raise two hundred thousand dollars by the year twenty twenty nine. Wow! So, yeah, so good for you, Gary. Um, really appreciate it, and we're just so. Thankful that we can be a part of this and help. That's out. exciting. Yeah, I'm we're really looking forward that. to it. We're looking forward to the knit along as well. So, uh, thanks a lot for inviting us. So that is the knit along. Okay. okay. So now, what's what's next? I think something's going on in the kitchen. I can smell something in the kitchen, and it smells great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so should we go? <laughs> Am I allowed to go in the kitchen now, or do I have to wait? You have to wait. Okay, <laughs> so I'll sit here patiently, impatiently. I'll sit here impatiently waiting for my um, notice to go into the kitchen. Sure. Okay. Jamie's just left for the kitchen and he's going to start baking. So I can't wait. I hear something. I hear someone coming. 
Oh, look what we have here. Have a seat. Hello. Wow, this is a treat. CW. CW. It's been a while. It How long has it been? SC. It's been a SC. year. Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> well, you call me CW. <laughs> Nobody ever calls me that. Oh. Oh my goodness. Not even, not even Mrs. Claus? Or Kitty Claus? Is there a Mrs.? <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Claus. <laughs> So it's been a year. It has been. It's been. Uh, it's been an entire full year. What have you been up to? I've been under. I've been doing a lot of stuff. Tons of stuff. 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 Knitting and dyeing and all kinds of stuff. Yarn dyeing. Okay. I've been very busy myself. Um, I was thinking we could talk a little bit about some history, perhaps. History. Or is there something else you'd like to talk about? I think it's this time of the year. Uh huh. I mean, this time of the episode to talk about history. We haven't done a lot of history talk. Jamie, for some reason, was not talking about history this episode. Is that right? Yeah. That young fella, he knows a whole lot about a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> he certainly is young, isn't he? <laughs> he certainly is. I think is. you better check your eyes. <laughs> My eyes are great. I can see all. I see all things all over the world. Oh wow! All at the same time. Tell us more, Santa. Well, I wanted to tell you a little bit the background of Mr. Claus. Okay. Saint That's Nicholas. Great. Excellent. Okay, so, my understanding, the story dates back centuries. There was a monk who was born many centuries ago named St. Nicholas mm -hmm. in an area that is known today in an area in Turkey. Oh. The legends and miracles and stories that were created, that he created, are legendary. He worked with the poor, and the sick, and the homeless. And from there, he was known as a savior of children, because he saved them from certain miseries, and even death, and even brought some children back to life. Apparently, wow. the miracles and the legends of St. Nicholas we're talking about. Yep. Now, his popularity gained as the protector of the children Throughout Europe, over the centuries, over the years, many years later, throughout Europe, the popularity of St. Nicholas grew. And in the Netherlands specifically, he was known as Sinta Nicholas. Now, this was just a different spelling. Nicholas, Nicholas. Emphasis on the I get double it. A. Yep. Sint Nicholas which was then shortened to Saint Nicholas, Saint Nicholas, Saint Nicholas, which then became Santa Claus. Mm. Now the Dutch in the late 18th century, there were settlers in New York, in upper state New York, along the Hudson Valley area. I've been there. You have been yes. there. I know I have seen you there. Oh, wow. Over times. Did you watch everything again. I did there? Absolutely. I oh. see everything. So Santa Claus grows in popularity and the stories follow to North America by the Dutch settlers. And Santa Claus is described as a chubby, jolly Dutchman who flies a wagon over the skies of the world dropping presents down chimneys. Mm, yes. Now by 1809, the popularity continues to grow. And this is how we, he is presented. By 1823, a few years later, a New York poet pens a classic poem that's called A Visit from St. Nicholas, better known as twas the night before Christmas. And now Santa Claus flies over the rooftops in a sleigh guided by eight splendid reindeer. And over the rooftops and down the chimney he goes, and in a blink of an eye, shoosh, and he goes and goes and around and around wow. and around. And Santa Claus, as we know him, is described as such, as we know him. 
by the 1840s, Christmas shopping becomes a thing and the department stores advertise using Santa Claus's image to draw attention to the Christmas spirit and the Christmas time. And it wasn't before long that Santa Claus shows and appears live in the department stores. And from How does there, that work? He's everywhere. Okay. He is everywhere. And so this attracts the children. The parents who bring the children, they shop and Christmas becomes that part of the tradition continues to this day. But for everyone out there, everyone has a tradition and a story, whether it be St. Nicholas, Santa Claus, Father Christmas, Kris Kringle, Père Noël, Papa Noël. And this is what we year upon year and these traditions and times around the globe from your childhood memories you bring forth and continue with these very special heartfelt traditions, each one, each your own. And this is the Christmas and the Santa Claus. Oh, that's fantastic. That's beloved by everyone. I recognize that. I, from when we were, when I was a little kid in public school, we were, we had to memorize, it was the night before Christmas, for our school you did. concert. Yes. Well, why don't you, can you remember a bit of it? Because I'm going to test you. <laughs> it was a long time ago, Santa. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring. Not, Not even a mouse. mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. And he would be. He would be. That's and everybody knows that. That's a beautiful story. It is a beautiful story. I heard that you have a fantastic singing voice. That's what, that's what the word on the street is. Well, I don't know about that, but one of my childhood memories, which goes back a very long time, Northern Ontario, with a little jingle that I remember when I was a little boy. And it goes something like, this. This is a very special song that brings back fond memories from a time long ago. Petit Papa Noël, quand tu descendras du ciel avec des jouets par milliers, n'oublie pas. Mon petit soulier, mais avant de partir, il faudra bien te couvrir. Dehors, tu vas avoir si froid, c'est un peu à cause de moi. Petit papa Noël. Yay! Merry Christmas, and to all, a good night. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. That was really good. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Hi there, everyone, and welcome once again to The Kitchen. So today I am planning something a little extra special for Christmas time, a Yule log. I, I understand there's a long tradition um, of the Yule log. I know it goes back to even Norse times where they, they burned a log during the, the, um, the winter solstice for good luck and a good year ahead. And that continued a cake. And today I am going to bake one and I'm gonna do it in the fireplace oven. For those of you who are watching for the first time, so that fireplace oven is called a beehive oven. This is something from the 1800s and prior to even in the 1700s. It goes way back when. So this oven is formed in the inside. It's kind of like a beehive, so it's rounded brick. I'm gonna build a fire inside, heat that space up, and it's gonna be hot enough to bake my Yule 
log. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a fire. That's the first thing I need to do because we need to heat that oven up. Okay, so as you can see, I've got all of my ingredients ready to get the cake started. So I have half a cup of cocoa powder that I'm gonna put into this bowl and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And there's also here two tablespoons of flour, not a whole lot of flour. I'm just gonna put that in this bowl. What I'm going to do is just whisk it together a little bit. You could either whisk it or you could sift it. Sift it, I would recommend. But you know, most recipes that I've seen these days, if you just whisk it, it blends it just as well. So I'm just gonna do that, mix it well together, blend it, and that's about it. I'm gonna set that aside. Now in this bowl, we're gonna put our five eggs. So. Set those aside, put them in there. Oh, I am wearing, let me just mention, because this is a very special new apron, and it reminded me as I'm wiping my fingers on there, and I'm not gonna get Christopher's beautiful red sweater dirty. This was, thank you, Les Tricoteuses du Quartier Yarn Shop in Montreal, and um, we were there just a few months ago and we chatted with the lovely owners um check out the episode so again thank you les tricoteuses i promised to make a uh, pudding chômeur at the time because i thought i was going to make something french for the first time but i haven't done that and because it's christmas i'm doing something christmasy but i specifically wanted to wear this lovely slimming apron Thank you, thank you girls, thank you ladies, thank you very much. So, okay, so I've got my five eggs in the bowl. I'm gonna add, this is two thirds cup of sugar. Now I'm just gonna whisk this together. Um, I'm gonna whisk it till it's nice and fluffy and then I'm gonna add the cocoa powder mixture and a few other things and we're gonna get started. Actually, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna prepare this parchment paper. What I need to do here is I'm gonna spread my pan. It's like 12 inches by 17 inches. I'm just gonna butter the bottom, put this parchment paper on, butter the top of it, you know, spread a little butter on there, have it prepared for when I put my batter mix in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. That's done. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna whip this batter together and make it nice and fluffy. So, I said to whisk it till it's light in color, thick and fluffy. I think it's about right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add half of the cocoa mixture into here and then I'm gonna Whisk it, beat it a little longer. Half of that mixture in, like that. And I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla is good in everything, isn't it? Let's just do this. Oh, that's gonna be good. Okay. Vanilla extract. It says to, I'm gonna whisk this just for, just for, just for a couple of seconds, just to say it's blended at a low speed. Just to blend it. Okay. I'm gonna add the remaining cocoa, salt, 
flour mixture. There we go. Again, just give it a quick blend. Now I'm just going to continue mixing that by hand just to make sure it's nicely blended. I think that's it. Let's put that there. Done. Now I'm going to pour this into the pan, but before I do that, I just want to get that oven ready. What we need to do is we need to rake out those hot coals into the into the pan of one of these you always wondered i'm sure you've all seen one of these before it's for coal it's for the coal shoot but also this is for the embers i'm going to just there's a hatch in there that i'm going to scrape these hot embers and coals down into here down below and this will contain them they'll go out and we'll be done the oven should be hot and ready for the cake so i'm just going to do that Okay, so I'm going to pour this batter into the pan and then we're going to put it in the oven. Now, just want to take some of the air bubbles out. We're just going to Tap that a little bit. Get some of those air bubbles out of there. And we're going to pop it in the oven. Okay, I'm very excited. <laughs> in it goes. I'm just going to put that cover on there tightly. The high tech locking mechanism to keep that lid on. Okay. That oven is sealed tightly. I'm going to check it in about eight to 10 minutes and the cake should be beautiful and ready to go. Okay, so the timer's gone off. I'm going to pull the cake out of the oven. Let's see how it goes. I didn't want to open it up to take a peekaboo because you know, that releases a lot of the heat inside that oven and we don't want that. So let's just go ahead. Remove the lock. Oh, let's put that over here. Oh, I can't quite see it. It's dark in there. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, it looks pretty good. Maybe a little cooked around the edge, but looks great. Okay, I think it's done. Now what we're going to do is, let me close this up. Okay, now what we're going to do is, we're going to sprinkle it, the top, well, let me grab a spatula. Okay. I'm going to just say to lift it off to see that it lifts off nicely. Oh, it does too. Oh, that's coming off easily. Okay, so we're going to take about two tablespoons of powdered sugar. I'm going to put it in this thing so that I can sprinkle it nicely. So let me just put two tablespoons here, two roughly or more as needed. So what I want to do is I'm going to sprinkle a little bit over top of this cake. I'm just going to pull that. Okay. Sprinkle that over the top. I'm going to sprinkle some evenly across here. What we're going to do is we're going to flip this cake 
onto this clean tea towel and then we're gonna roll it in here and then that way we just don't want the cake to stick but we want to roll it up nicely in here let's do that so now we're gonna flip this I think it's gonna come off just easily we're gonna flip this right onto that cloth Oh, hi. Okay, how hot is this? Ay ay, ay ay. Oh, the paper, the paper's come right off. Okay, I thought I was gonna have to peel that right off. Now, I'm gonna sprinkle the top of this. Sprinkle the top of that because, remember, we don't want it to stick to the cloth. So, we go like that. Okay. Here, I'm going to flip this around because we want a little bit of cloth to cover that cake. So, I'm going to go like this and I'm going to start rolling it. Oh, oh, I don't know. That's what it says to do. Oh yeah, oh, here we go. Rolling the Christmas log. Okay, it's a little bit crispy around the edges. I could tell. Why is it moving down like that? Oh, it's gonna reach the end of the cloth, just. Okay. Where are you? Okay, so now for the filling. We've got four ounces of cream cheese. We've got a half a cup of powdered sugar. And I'm going to use some heavy cream. We've got a cup of that. And I'm going to put a teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm just going to beat this room temperature cream cheese so that it's nice and fluffy and smooth. Okay, so I've added the powdered sugar. I'm going to keep beating that. Add that teaspoon of vanilla. bit of the cream. We're going to add this heavy table cream, a quart at a time, till it blends nicely. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. It's like a whipped cheesy cream. And, well, now, what we're going to do is we're going to roll the cake out and then we're going to spread the filling and roll it back up and refrigerate it because it's going to have to cool completely before we ice it.
it was, rolled. This is going into the fridge for a couple of hours and I'm going to then do the final frosting for it. We're going to frost and decorate it. So far so good. I think it's looking pretty darn log-like. Okay, so I refrigerated the Yule log for a couple of hours in the fridge and here's the final, well not the final result, it's ready for the frosting and you can see, oh you can see the cream filling, it's looking beautiful. This is a chocolate ganache frosting and it's basically semi-sweet chocolate with heavy cream and a little syrup and uh, I'm going to spread it over the log and then we're going to refrigerate it once again just so the ganache firms up somewhat and then we're going to sort of carve some lines in it make it look log-like. I'm going to pop this back in the fridge to cool right down and um, come back and do some final touches. Oh my gosh! Okay, so this is it. This is the final piece of the cake puzzle. It's cooled off. It's got a nice shine to it. I'm going to give it a little bit of decorative bark looking lines through it. We're going to sprinkle a little powdered sugar, a little cocoa, and that's going to be it. And voila! A Yule log baked in the century old Beehive oven, just like the old days. Happy holidays, yum times tomorrow. See okay, what do we have left? What do we have left to talk about? We have. Oh. To that's... announce the winner oh, of the he's... Name the Bear. He's very cute. He's very cute, this teddy bear. There were so many great submissions. There were. So many great names. A lot of them were a combination of your name and my name. Yeah, that's true. And there were some other unusual ones. There were a few very comical, some very... Some made a lot of sense. Some was variations of the word bear from different countries. Um, yeah, there were a lot of uh, naming conventions related to different countries. And then there were a lot from Canada as well and indigenous names and whatnot. So, There's so many. It was, it was a tough choice. We had a battle over it, um, but I think we were we there we were really about, excited about there the last about three the, that we were like we kind of really loved. Well, there were more than three. I think there were a lot. Well, I know, but when we whittled it yeah, down, well, we, yes, I, I, yeah, we loved many. There were it could have been anyone. Yeah, it was tough. It was really tough to whittle it down, but we did come to one of them. And do you want to say what it is? Well, why did you? Should we explain what what it's all what? Well, this one, okay, this this one, the winner, the name of it um, really made us think about, or I guess the way we could relate to it was because we're surrounded by this plant. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. The, it's very local. It's, it's very local. right outside our window. There's some right there, as a matter of fact. You can see right out that window. And I use it and for so, dying all the time. That's right. Yeah. And then it encompassed something that we talked about, about, you know, it just wanted to be sort of a... Uh, a very, you know, like a non-gender, just a very uniform kind of name across the board. Yes. And what else? And it was it was so interesting in its simplicity because when you thought about it, I thought, well, oh, but then it, 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 it had all of the criteria that we were looking for in what would be yes. perfect for this little... So we this little thing. So we loved all the names. There were so many great names. It was fun to go through them. But we settled on... Sumac. And why Sumac? Well, because we're surrounded by sumac trees. And? and the spelling of it. You could either spell it the way it's supposed to be spelled, uh, S-U-M-A-C, or... It's not or, it's one way. 
No, no, no. There was no. The reason why it was it worked. I know it's not is, spelled Sue Mac. It's spelled Sue Mac. Yeah, Sue. The word Sue, as in Susan, and Mac. So, <laughs> so there's no separate <laughs> spelling for it. It's this was the whole idea because when it was sent, it was spelled how we're why we chose it. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Sue yeah. Mac. Yes. So there's Sue, <laughs> S U E, Mac. Yeah. A-C-K. And it's Sue Mac. And Kerrigan, so congratulations. You have won yarn and a bag, and you can send me a private note and um, with your details, and I'll, I'll, we'll send off the yarn to you. So there it is, Sue Mac. Say hello, Sue Mac. <laughs> hi. Hi. Hi, hi. Oh, so, that's, nice. so that's it, Sue Mac. Sue Mac. Okay, what's on the agenda, Jamie? What's on the agenda? What do you mean? What's coming up? What's coming up? Sumac. Where does he stay? Let's just put him here for now. <laughs> He's trying to get at my... We've got a lot going coming up for the Sumac's new year. He's trying to get at my eggnog. Oh, um, yeah, I'm sure. And we've got... We're actually scheduled to be doing a number of um, festivals next year. So we... We are, are. Yes. We've talked about them a couple of times, but they're still... On the go, as far as we know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they're on the go or not. One of the first ones in April, and then we've got another one. In Which one's in April? The I can't keep track of these. Knit things. City is in April in Montreal. Knit City, and there's the possibility of Twist. Twist so Twist. far is is a go ahead. Yes. For you know, for all purposes. Yeah. We're just going with it till the time comes as we get closer to that. That's not till August. And Prince Edward Island is in September. That would be incredible. They're, oh my god. I, I just am honored that they're holding it for my birthday. That's right. They wanted they they built the entire event around, event my around Christopher's birthday. Was that ever nice of them? It was the only way to get him there. <laughs> so, and the other big thing we have, what were we going to say? Well, I was just going to mention just going to Prince. I, I've never been to the East Coast, and you've been to the. I mean, the East Coast is absolutely. It's, I love it. I love it. it. It's. I've not been. I've seen it a gazillion times, and you know. Travel videos, videos, photos, people, everybody I know has been there. Um, it's absolutely incredibly stunning and completely different than the West Coast, which I've been to the West Coast many, many, many times. And it's, it sounds just absolutely glorious. Um, we'll do a road trip to it. It'll be it'll be the fall. I don't even know if we're going to be going through the colors. It, it could be absolutely I, I don't incredible. Know. Yep. September's usually... Oh, it'll be gorgeous. Like when going through no. Quebec. Oh my gosh, it'll be we're so beautiful. We're going to be going through Quebec, the in, province of Quebec. Yeah, it'll be really nice. Quebec City, probably. Yeah. But we could go... We may do two different routes. We may go up through Quebec City and come back states side um, and take yeah. a totally different yeah road trip. And it's going to be... It would be incredible, too. But I can't believe it. I, until it happens, I can't even believe it's going to be amazing. And so bringing it back closer to home. So month-wise, like next month, we should have our workshop finished. We are going to have it finished by... So that will... And I, I can't wait to take you through a tour of that. I'm really excited about that. Yes. And then we have... Um, we've got... We've shipped out some yarn to some stores, and we'll talk about the stores that the yarn is in. And next year is going to be a year of, of going to other stores as well. Um, so I, I was explaining to somebody, though, it's kind of like dating. So we 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 were on some dates with some yarn shops, and that's really oh, that. that. I thought you meant us. <laughs> I was like, what else? Oh, I can't remember yarn that. It's like dating. I can't remember I that know. far back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was it was really interesting, and so we said yes to a couple of stores and but it was, we were only opening we were only opening the door to a couple of stores because again we want the the workshop up and running before we say yes because that's really where production's going to start to oh and even fire through a lot but even then quickly. it's going to be the production's going to be i mean it's very timely skein for skein it's timely so it's still It'll just be more organized, but it'll be it'll definitely be quicker than what it is. Oh, for sure. As far as production, yeah. like in numbers, that's it's not going to multiply. It's just going to oh, be yeah, a smoother, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, smoother no. operation, and probably on a daily, on a day to day, we'll be able to produce more skeins for sure. Oh, definitely, absolutely. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Oh no, the when production there yet, production is going to increase threefold. Not definitely. Threefold. Yes, it will. He's going to make me work harder. <laughs> Wash that wool, wash that wool, and I'm carrying the bundles, the, the bales on my back from here to the wool shed. 
I bought a wagon though to put them in so they're not on my back. And I have snowshoes that fit you as well. So you can't use snow as an get, excuse. We've got to get skis. I have heat the, out there. The it's wagon all, has wheels. Set. We need to get skis on it for the winter time because when I'm hauling that stuff yeah, but back and forth. I thought you said you're going to outsource that. No, I, we, we talked out, about getting a harness for the Zan. <laughs> for the We're Zan. A harness the Zamboni. For the Zamboni. For the Zamboni. <laughs> for the Zamboni. <laughs> and here he comes now. Come on, Zan. You're, we're talking about, come on over here. Zan, we're going to attach a harness to him and he could be attached to that wagon because it holds 800 pounds <laughs> and we're going to hook him up to that. We're going to hook him up to that thing for sure. He's right here. He's trying to climb up. Come here, you. Come on. Anyway, come so on. I guess closer to this day, uh, it is the holiday season and I'm looking forward to having some a lot of family time and really looking forward to that and also relaxing. And I've got a couple things that I'm going to do. When I say relaxing, I always have a, an inventory of things that I want to get accomplished. So I'm not sure how relaxing that is, but part of it is reading. And I, I've got a couple of books that I've got lined up that I want to read. I have Knitlandia um, by Clara Parks that I just really want to get into again. And the other thing that I love doing is we have, I don't know, hundreds of books in the house. Hundreds. Uh, I think I have, I definitely have more books than I do yarn, much more. And oh, so, I don't know about that. Well, <laughs> Sheesh. maybe not. It's close. I don't know. Yeah. But, but books. And we picked up a few new books. We did. Um, I have a couple of new history books that I'm looking forward to getting into. Yeah. I've glanced through them, but I, yeah. Well, what I love doing is I like going to the bookshelf and sitting down on the bookshelf and I'll either reorganize the bookshelf or I'll just pick up books that I've read before. And to me, when I select one, it's like reacquainting yourself with an old friend that's that's how i feel with the, with the characters and i love doing that so mm. uh, i'm really looking forward to to reading over the holidays and getting some knitting done as well but i would love to know what you're doing over the holidays as well and if you've been able to carve out some time for yourselves and either knitting projects or, or other hobbies i'm hoping to maybe do i've been thinking about another sweater so maybe that might be my project because Winter's on its way. It arrived yesterday here. And who's and the designer? Me. Well, Gem. No, I'm going to Gem. Work. Yes, the house of Gem. <laughs> um, and I'm going to... No, I like to find a pattern and then just kind of make it my own. Yeah, that's awesome. Add a little that's great. mat and what have you. We yeah. had this conversation once during yeah. the time I was working on this sweater because, you know, sizing, I don't know how to read a pattern. I followed along with this one. I, I need to learn to read a pattern. Um... And then I'm just using a lot of logic, but I'm inspired by everybody else out there because when you talk to people about how they knit a sweater and why and when they, how they choose a sweater, people, some people have knitted sweaters just right top of mind, but maybe they're more, you know, they're experienced knitters. But once you have like a hang of how a sweater, how to produce a sweater, you could really create something all your own. Yeah, definitely. And I like to put my own stamp on. So you, what I'm hearing you say is you're going to over design my own sweater. You're going to <laughs> figure out. You're going to design your own sweater, basically. And then, well, that's great. That's that's great. And again, we'd love to hear what you're doing over the holidays as well. I also wanted just to thank everybody again for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, uh, this is definitely good. <laughs> we really appreciate it. And thank you for all your comments as well. Love reading the comments and and answering them as well. So happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you all. Merci mes amis québécois, mes amis francophones, mes amis français. Thank you so much and we'll see you all again Take real care. soon. Take care everyone. Bye bye.